I like to use the first experiment when I do these types of problems. Do you notice that I know the rate and during the first experiment, 20 millimeters of mercury per minute. I know the concentration of H2, and I know the concentration of NO. So, if I'm following, trying to find the rate constant, it is a constant, it should be the same for any of these experiments. Um, I like to use experiment one because it's easy to read the data. So the rate for experiment number one is 20, and that's millimeters of mercury per minute, divided by the concentration of H2 in the first experiment, which is 1.00, and we're going to call that molarity units, but we will leave it unitless for right now, and then divided by the concentration of NO squared, and the NO concentration in the first experiment is 6.00. So now we can solve for the rate constant. So let's see what we end up with here. We have 20 divided by 1, which we probably don't need to do, divided by 6 squared. Let's see, 6 squared is 36, isn't it? Now my calculator shows that as a fraction and it bothers me. So let's go ahead and we'll change that to a decimal. And that turns out to be uh, to two significant figures, 0.56. That's my rate constant. Now, for right now, we're going to leave that unitless. Later on, we'll attach a unit to it. Now that we know the rate constant, that rate constant should be good for any of these experiments, including experiment 7, where I don't know the rate of the reaction. So let's use our rate law and these concentrations of NO and H2 and our rate constant, which we just calculated, to find the rate during experiment number 7. So R equals K times H2 to the first and NO concentration squared. And we'll plug in these numbers. K is 0.56. And then H2 during the uh, seventh experiment is 3.78. Oops, let's make sure we can see that. 3.78. And the NO concentration during that experiment is 2.45. And my rate law says we have to square that. So let's see what our rate would be. 0.56 times 3.78 times, I'm going to use my parentheses key here, 2.45, and then my caret key squared, close off my parentheses, enter, I get 12.7. We probably should round that to 13, and that would be millimeters of mercury per minute. So the rate in this experiment, where there's a question mark, I would expect to be about 13 millimeters of mercury of pressure change every minute. Okay, now there's a simple rate law problem. Let's do another one, and then you guys can do some on your own. We'll probably do a bunch more in class, too. Once you get the hang of this, you'll say, man, that's pretty easy. All right, let's take a look at this next experiment. Let's find the order with respect to A and B. So remember the exponents for A and B. And those exponents, by the way, will either be 0, 1, or 2. And remember the math lesson that we had at the beginning. If it's zero order, changing the concentration has no effect on the rate. If it's first order, whatever I do to the concentration, that same thing will happen to the rate. And if it's second order, whatever I do to the concentration, square it. And that's what will happen to the rate. So, let's take a look at the first two experiments. A does not change. But B triples, doesn't it? What does my rate do? Hmm. It goes from 3 times 10 to the negative third to 3 times 10 to the negative third. It doesn't do a darn thing. So, tripling B... Well, A stayed constant, had nothing to do with the rate. Nothing happened here. So, what is the order with respect to B? Is it 0, 1, or 2? If you said 0 order, you are correct. So, B would be 0 order. We'll take a look at the data and see which uh, experiments we would use to find the order for A. Think about it. If you said the second and third experiments... That's a good choice. 
because in the second and third experiments, B, B was held constant. A, however, tripled. So the changing of the rate will be because of what I did to A, not because of what I did to B. So let's see what happens. When I tripled this, the rate goes from 3 times 10 to the negative third, which is 0 0.003, to 2.7 times 10 to the negative second, which is 0 0.027. Now, if you put that in your calculator, you see that this goes up nine times. So tripling A without doing anything to B made my rate go up nine times. Well, how do I go get from tripling something to nine tupling something? Is it to the zero, first, or second power? If you said second power, good job. So A has an order of two. The overall order remember, is the sum of a plus b, so 0 plus 2, which is 2. Let's write the rate law for the reaction. The rate law is r equals k times a squared and b to the 0 power. Now you math-minded kids know that since b is to the 0 power, I could just as easily have left that off, because anything to the 0 power is 1. Now I want to find the value of k. <coughs> so let's solve this for k. Wouldn't k be equal to r over the concentration of a squared? Once again, we'll leave b out because b is to the 0 power and that just becomes 1. So my rate, and I like to use the first experiment, is 3.00 times 10 to the negative third molarity units per second divided by um, A and its concentration squared. So A during the first experiment is 0 0.10, and those brackets mean molarity units squared. Now I want to include the units. So one of these molarity units divide this guy out. So I have two molarity units on the bottom, so I can get rid of one. So my unit will be 1 over second molarity units. And let's see what the numerical value is. We have uh, 3 times 10 to the negative third, that's 0 0.003, divided by uh, 0.1 squared. And that equals 0 0.30. And that is my rate constant and that's 1 over second molarity units. Now, let's calculate the, rate, the concentration of A during experiment 5. So in experiment 5 we know the rate, the concentration of B, but we don't know the concentration of A. So, here we go. Um, if we use our rate law and solve this for A, we know that A squared would be, let's see, if I'm solving for A squared, wouldn't that be R over K but if I want just a, wouldn't that be the square root of the rate over k? True story. See, a squared would be, I bring k over to the other side, r over k. But if I just want a, I would have to square root both sides. So let's see what that would be. The rate during the first experiment is, or sorry, during the fifth experiment, is 9.00 times 10 to the negative third divided by my constant which is 0 0.30 and then we'll square root that. So let's see what we get. 0 0.009, that's 9 times 10 to the negative third, divided by 0.3 equals, well my answer is not 0 0.03, we still have to square root that. So I'm going to go control square root that answer and I get 0.17. So the concentration of A during that fifth experiment would be 0.17 molar. Okay, now we're going to practice a couple more of these in class. But make sure before you come to class, you've watched this video, you've taken good notes, so you're ready to do a few more examples, and this is not completely new to you in class. All ready? Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.